Hey guys, how's it going? This is Seth Kniep, Kniep in It Real. Really good to see you, hope your day's going well. It's the weekend, I'm excited about the weekend because we are launching new products and I'm so excited and I'm partnering it with different people on Amazon. Um, so many cool things happening. We've created different accounts to test different things to figure out what Amazon's doing with hijackers on both sides. And I can tell you right now, Amazon is coming down hard on hijackers. So be encouraged. If you are trying to protect a private label, and you're doing it well, Amazon is in your favor. So I strongly encourage you to remember that as you build up your Amazon income. I would like to do a series on the number one most common uh, mis mistakes Amazon rookies make. And I'm gonna share one of them with you today. And that is they try to make everything perfect before they launch their first product. And that is a major mistake and it'll cause you to lose money, it'll cause you to behind, get behind the competition and you won't rank as well either because you'll overdo it and you put yourself at risk. Now, if you are a very analytical person who needs all the information first before you act, this is gonna be a weakness for you. That anal analyzing is good, that information is good. You need knowledge to win and to make money. But if you feel like you have to know everything and have everything lined up perfectly before you launch, you need to partner up with someone who is a little more impulsive, a little more risky, a little more visionary, who will push you off the edge and get you swimming before you figure out exactly how to do every stroke. Now, I'm gonna give you an example of this. This is called an MVP, also known as a minimum viable product. It comes from a book called The Lean Startup. Now, the book The Lean Startup, which was written years ago, has nothing to do with selling an Amazon. It's about software, but the principles 100% apply. You need to make sure that when you launch your product, you're not trying to get everything perfect the first time. This is called iterations. For example, you might start out with a pair of drumsticks. Let's just say you're selling musical instruments. And these drumsticks are better than anyone else's because of the wood. But you may not be able to get the shape exactly like you want because it's too expensive. You don't have enough capital for the manufacturer to come out with a different shape. So you're gonna have to go with the shape they've been already using. Therefore, it's not gonna be as differentiated as you like but at least you know it's better than all the competition because it's using a wood that no one else is using. Do you see where I'm going with this? You need to make sure you're differentiating yourself enough to make money. But when after you, let's say you buy 500 of these and you sell them off, or you're halfway through selling them, it's going well, now you can read your customer comments in the reviews and in the questions on the listing on Amazon and use that to determine how you're gonna differentiate your product the next time. So the next time, you might not only have be using the same new kind of wood, but a different shape as well. Or maybe some kind of sandpaper that goes with it to keep the hands smooth so they don't splinter you. Or a different tapering effect for a different sound based on where you hold the drums when you're drumming, you see? That's the idea, is each time you're gonna make your product better. But if you try to make everything perfect at the beginning, you're gonna find out maybe two ways you differentiated were great, but five other ways is not what the customers wanted and you just wasted a bunch of money. The number one best feedback you can get for any product you are selling on Amazon is your customer. They are the people giving you money for your product, therefore they are king, they are royalty. You need to listen to them. One of the other rookie mistakes people make that is related when selling an Amazon is they think like an Amazon seller instead of like an Amazon buyer. Think like a buyer. If you went to amazon.com and you're looking for drumsticks, what would you look for? What would influence your buying decision? That's where your mind needs to be. The better you understand that place, the more effective you're gonna be at selling. Now, here's another way you can do this. You can do what's called bundling. A very common question comes up, well, if I'm just starting on Amazon, how many products should I start with and launch? Well, that depends on a lot of things. Number one, how much experience do you have? If you're limited on experience, you don't wanna launch five products because your chances at, at something going wrong are greater. I would start with one or two products that are bundleable. In other words, you can bundle this with this, okay? So now you got your drumsticks and you got your tambourine. You can put these together. You can sell them together as one. You can sell this by itself and this by itself. For example, this may not be the best bundle in the world because obviously you need a drum for this. Most people aren't gonna do this unless it's the kind that you can attach to your drum set, but you get the idea. Sell products that you can bundle. So you end up with three. I'm selling this one, I'm selling this one, and I'm selling them together. Now you're doing what's called a triple test. Not a split test, but a triple test. And you can test each, each of these and figure out which one is selling the best. Every decision you make as a businessman or woman is going to be based on a balancing of your resources, people, time, money, knowledge. And whichever one you have the least of, that's the one you need to protect. When I first started on Amazon, I had very little money, lots more time. 
So guess what I did? I spent more time saving money by doing stuff for myself. I'll take my own photos. I'll do my own ad campaigns. I won't pay someone to do this for me because my money was more limited. But over time, as I began to get more money and less time, now I spend more money to save my time. You see, that's how you balance your resources. So at the beginning, your knowledge is less when you're, you're, buy, you're selling on Amazon. So your chance of success is lower. Therefore, it's better to spend more money on educating yourself, understanding, and launching a few simple products instead of saying, I'm going to launch for you know 27 products. That's ambitious, but that may not be wise. Now, let's say you continue to expand and you end up with something. I wouldn't recommend this as a first product, but something as cool and big as a gym day. This is a pretty cool gym bay. Now, again, it's large. It may not be your best product to start with, but I want to use it as an example. The first time you sell this, it may be completely plain. You don't have the money or the time to make sure it's all designed right. It's just going to be simple. Then why would you sell it? Because it's better because the, the uh, head of this is better is a different material or it's a different tightness to cause a different kind of sound. You see that? So you're using, you're doing something to differentiate based on what you read in the competitor's critical reviews. The next time you get a shipment, then you might change out these little locking mechanisms to be stronger. Then you might give it a really nice design. And each time is called an iteration, just like software. Each time you buy more, it gets better. Now this is really cool on a number of levels. If for some reason you bundle these together or even along with this instrument here, you're, you're ahead of the competition. You can have all these different versions of your product and it's going to be harder and harder for hijackers to copy you because they have to go to a lot of work to make their product match yours when you have all these different options and therefore laziness. I mean, the fact they're hijackers in the beginning is because they're lazy. They don't want to do the work. So they just kind of piggyback on someone else's listing. Well, you can leverage the fact that they're lazy and, and discourage them from it by doing extra hard work at the beginning so it's harder for people to keep up with you. So again, every time you order a new set of inventory from your supplier, you're going to make that product better every time. Don't try to get it all perfect at the beginning. You need to start selling. Get your product out there. As long as you differentiate it at least in one way very well and you've done your research, start selling it. Even if you have to drop the price, get it going, get in the game. Don't keep watching the game. I'm going to study. You know, that's how you, you know, throw a football and that's how you tackle and that's how you defend. And this is what this means. No, you'll never learn. You got to get out there, put on the helmet, start running, get knocked over, get bloodied up. It's okay. Don't sit there with your hands under your butt and analyze until you are mentally constipated. Get selling. As long as you differentiate in at least one strong way, there's no reason you can't start making money. And in the future, you're going to keep gaining knowledge. You're going to get better. One more thought. The process is fluid. It's growing. It's revolving. It's not like you figure everything out and then you have this massive launch. That's not the way it works. You figure out as you go. You get, do all the research you can ahead of time, yes. But once you launch the product, you realize this product is never going to be where you really want it because customers are going to say, you know what? I wish the coffee mug had a different shaped handle. I wish the drumsticks had different tapering and different design. Hey, the next time I order more, I'm going to have my supplier do that. And now that I have more capital because I've been selling, I'm going to use the capital to make my product better. You're going to keep throwing the money back into your business. If you keep taking the money to live on, your business is not going to work for you. You're going to work for your business. But if you want your business to make money for you, throw your money back into the business and keep making it bigger and better until it's now generating a very hefty income. And then you can enjoy the fruit from your hard labor. This is Seth Keneep, Keneep in a Real. This week only, we have a bundle, a bundle one entire year of Amazon coaching. Three hours every week, plus you get the established version of Amazow, plus you get lifetime access to Keyword Tool Dominator, plus you get lawyer's advice, plus you get reviews help, plus you get, I mean, a ton of things, 70 plus exclusive videos not found on YouTube. You get group coaching, three hours of coaching every single week for a year. All of this, this week only. So if that's something you want, Make sure you sign up. All right, have an awesome day. I'll see you. Bye.